Carver, of course. I'm standing in for Darren Grimes. Here's what's coming up on the show. So the Health Secretary, Steve Barclay, has said too much management burdens the NHS front line and that he wants to crack down on bureaucrats within our health service. Many of us will rely on the NHS in our lives, so we want it to be as efficient and effective as possible. But does it need a complete overhaul? Also, do we need to revamp our motorways? The Foreign Secretary, Liz Truss, and uh, to be Prime Minister probably, said she'll look at whether motorway speed limits should be scrapped and would possibly remove smart motorways as well. Trains are always in the news, but considerably more of us travel by car. We do our commute by car, we pick up our children by car, we do all sorts. So what do you think? Would you drive on a motorway with no speed limit at all? And there were shocking scenes yesterday as climate activists glued themselves together around the Speaker's chair in the House of Commons whilst they were on a tour of the venue. How concerned should we be about this stunt from Extinction Rebellion? Have they highlighted a weakness in security at the Houses of Parliament? I think so. Anyway, of course, your views are much more important than any of mine. And today in Solve the Palaver with Emily Carver, I'm asking you, is it time to pull the plug on net zero? This, of course, is in light of Russia indefinitely closing indefinitely closing Nord Stream 1. Do we need to really focus now on our own energy supply? Tweet me at GB News. You can get in touch at on GB Views at gbnews.uk by email. Of course, you can also watch us online on YouTube. Thanks very much for tuning in. Lots to get stuck in. Who? <laughs> So the next prime minister is going to have to stand up to the eco-zealots. Yesterday, we saw a bunch of doom-mongering eco-warriors bike lock themselves to the gates of parliament, erect banners in New Palace Yard, and even glue themselves around the speaker's chair in the House of Commons chamber. A good day at the office for these professional activists, but for the rest of us, a definite sign of what's to come. The likely leader, Liz Truss, has said she will lift the fracking ban within days of getting the keys to number 10. She plans to approve more oil drilling in the North Sea. Faced with the reality of sky-high prices made worse by Putin's indefinite suspension of Nord Stream 1, that's the key gas pipeline from Russia to the West, this is the common sense thing to do. I'd go further than that and say it's our moral duty to increase supply as much and as quickly as possible. But it's not going to be an easy ride. I don't suppose climate protesters, protesters are simply going to sit by and allow us to get cracking with fracking, are they? Instead, they'll kick up an almighty fuss, loudly oppose any initiative to produce more oil and gas, and disrupt those few that eventually do go ahead. Of course, they don't care about the fact we desperately need more oil and gas to keep businesses afloat and families warm this winter, or the harsh truth that there's absolutely no way we can survive on renewables alone for at least the next couple decades. This afternoon, there are a handful of Just Stop Oil extremists occupying a tunnel they dug themselves under a key delivery route for the nearby oil terminal in Thurrock, Essex. The same Thurrock where the Conservative-run council has reportedly spent a whopping £1 billion on a green energy spree over the past seven years. That's four times its annual spending on services they're spending on green technology, including 50 solar panels. But it's hardly surprising the eco-loons feel emboldened to kick up a fuss over plans to increase our gas supply, is it? Successive governments have fallen hook, line and sinker for net zero dogma, signing us up to arbitrary targets, writing them into law and even setting up unaccountable quangos to hold them to it. As I say, the government is going to have to ignore the cries of the likes of Extinction Rebellion, Just Stop Oil and their assortment of bizarre spin-off groups. Eco-extremists seem more than happy to spend a night or two in a prison cell for their beliefs. Indeed, they wear it as a badge of honour. Makes sense if you truly believe the world is only days, weeks, months away from combusting into flames. It's our politicians, though, that have left us unforgivably exposed to the whims of a criminal aggressor with sociopathic tendencies. To stand up to Putin and to keep the lights on at home, the government is going to have to pull the plug on the eco-zealots.